James Kaufman, World News Report, today, June 14, 2025. God bless you and yours, no matter where you are in the world. Please subscribe, give us a thumbs up, ring that bell for critical future updates. Ladies and gentlemen, we have been through it for several days. Coming off one large three-day geomagnetic storm, we've just had another two-and-a-half-day geomagnetic storm that will turn into a three- or four-day geomagnetic storm. Looking at our KP indexes, which gives us a general idea of the solar winds and plasma hitting Earth, we see that we've been in a geomagnetic storm for the last 36 hours. A G1 and G2 geomagnetic storm, according to our estimated planetary KP index. We're actually in a G3 geomagnetic storm. If you look down here, our college index. Now, all of the indicators state that we were in a geomagnetic storm most of the day yesterday, but the newest and latest and greatest used by NOAA and NASA is our estimated planetary KP index, and it's showing that we are lighting up. This is a huge geomagnetic storm. The question is, what could have caused it? A real quick look at that storm. Looks like the highest we saw was a G2 geomagnetic storm, and it looks like we had about 12 hours of a G2, excuse me, 15 hours of a G2 geomagnetic storm. Wow, and only 9 hours of a G1 geomagnetic storm. That's just yesterday. Today we've already seen 6 hours of a G1 geomagnetic storm, and prior to yesterday we saw 6 additional hours. We're just coming off another geomagnetic storm that no one could tell me what caused it. Now, I will say that both NOAA and NASA have come out and forecast a geomagnetic storm, a G2 geomagnetic storm, for June 14th through June 15th. That could add days to what's going on. I couldn't keep a good internet signal yesterday. Right now you can see that we're in a lull, so I'm trying to get out a couple of videos looking at this, but we had absolutely nothing. Now we're talking about nothing but plasma hitting us, and not very strong, say about 24 centimeters at the max, and no solar winds whatsoever. We know we didn't have a coronal hole earth facing at the point, although we do now, and we know that there were no large flares. We can see here on our GOES X-ray, that we didn't even have an M flare for the last seven days. What could be going on? Well, our atmosphere is completely dissipated. It's almost gone. Here's Noah's first warning for yesterday. That'd be June 13th. They did guesstimate a G2 moderate geomagnetic storm, and they nailed it. And the only reason that they give us is due to proximity CME influences. In other words, we're not getting hit by any CME. We didn't get hit by any solar flare or any x-rays or any protons. This happened only last week and I had never seen this occur before. Well, it's happening again, ladies and gentlemen. It's happening again. No actual cause here. No CME that was earthbound, yet we are taking it hard. We haven't even seen an M flare in seven days. All right, the next warning we have is for today through tomorrow. And that's going to be because of high-speed solar winds. Now, I do agree that we have a coronal hole Earth-facing, and this would make perfect sense. But that's still to be seen. We haven't been hit by any of that solar winds whatsoever. All we've seen is plasma that's only generated by a filament eruption or a solar flare. Solar winds, as indicated here, are created by coral holes where the canopy is missing, allowing faster solar winds to speed out of our sun towards Earth in this situation. They're looking for a G2 geomagnetic storm for the day today. I believe this is into tomorrow as well. Now, I do understand that the coral hole was not Earth-facing when they did put out their warning for the 14th, so I wanted to show you the last two hours on our GOES Solar Ultraviolet Imager, 195 angstroms. It's been Earth-facing. It has been for 40 hours. 
So get ready to rumble once again, if possible. Again, we're going to go to Discover and Ace. You can see here, no solar flares are directed. We did have a, let's see, M1.25 yesterday, but that sure wouldn't have come anywhere near Earth yet. And again, I don't even think Noah knew it was coming. Take a look at the 13th yesterday. They have plasma here peaking out at about 7 centimeters cubed. 7 centimeters cubed, right? And that was the 13th to the 14th. Look how low the plasma is today. We never in the last two days saw it go over about 7 centimeters cubed. Solar winds, they believe, on the 13th, went from 400 to about 575. It looks like they're expecting them to dwindle today down to 500. I don't see that happening either. We just paid to upgrade, well, this model, other models, and build a new building for these people at NOAA. What is going on? All right, over to real-time solar wind discover satellite. Usually sees the action about 50 minutes before Earth gets impacted. Well, this is going to be a three-day chart here. And I wanted to show you that plasma for three days, well, we never went over, I believe the high number was about 24, right? Here's 26. But remember, all day yesterday, that starts here and goes all the way through. All day yesterday, this area here, where we were below 20 centimeters cubed, solar winds were at 400. And remember, we were in a G1 and G2 geomagnetic, geomagnetic storm, and our shields were up, according to this. Pretty scary stuff. We're still in a geomagnetic storm, even though the plasma dipped off from 26 centimeters cubed. Of course, the, the solar wind's not even in play at 444 kilometers per second what a nightmare this is we jumped down to 12 uh, 15 18 16 but this is all time period that we've been in a geomagnetic storm as well this day i.e right here started at 7 p.m central last night so all night long we got hit by g1 g2 geomagnetic storms but there was really no plasma and no solar winds you can see the plasma is actually starting to dump. Remember, they only guesstimated up to 7 centimeters cubed of plasma. That was the big day they had, if you remember, on their Space Weather Prediction Center. Now we see the solar wind starting to go up. They might have caught this one, well, right? I think that they'll go much higher than what they said, about 525. I think that they'll go well over 600 kilometers per second. And our shields are currently basically down here in pink. You can see we have an elevated temperature here in green as well. So really, no space weather to speak of, but we've been in a G1, G2 geomagnetic storm for well over 30 plus, almost 40 hours. So this is just taking a look at the last 24 hours here. And let me tell you, only the last three hours have we let up whatsoever. And look at the plasma down here. 22.6, but only for an hour and a half. Very strange. Then it steps down to 13, to 7. Remember, the highest they had today was about 5 or 6. Solar winds. We do see them all over the place, but they are moving up. They said that they were expecting them to go to, I believe, about, let's see. No, excuse me. They had them going up yesterday from 4 to almost 600, and then going down today on the 14th from 600 or 575 down to 500. What a mess Noah is. So what caused, what caused this geomagnetic storm with no real plasma uh, and... Really, no solar winds whatsoever. And why did they think that we were going to go up yesterday? That would have been till here, which we did not, solar wind-wise. We're down in the 400s. They said go up to 575. 
And then today, starting here, we would go down, down all day to 400. And just the opposite is happening. Very, very strange. Even though they did, well, they did think that uh, we would have a G1, G2 geomagnetic storm today and did give a warning. We will check ACE, real-time space weather satellite, just to make sure we're not going crazy, which I think we are. Lots of data has been removed, as you can see. Numerous hours. Solar winds are going up, not down like they said. The day started here. They're going up from 425 to over 525. They were supposed to go from 575 to 400, if you recall. We just looked again in plasma. Well, it was slightly elevated here, and we did take a hit throughout this entire period here, but plasma just not, does not look elevated enough to have caused what we have seen. And my second question is, is what caused the plasma? A nearby CME? A glancing blow? No one's used those words yet. There was no CME that hit our ghost satellite. How could we have one just all of a sudden appear? Let's check the backside of our planet here. This is getting awful strange. All right, both NASA and NOAA have turned off all of their models. Uh, I can't get to anything. Usually my model would come right up and nothing's coming up uh, whatsoever. And that's with all the models too, if it even comes up at all. Now, all my other pages are working fine, but we're not getting the information that we're after here. In other words, what's hitting the backside of our planet? Because this sure is not coming from the sun. And I don't want everyone to start screaming, Seer, Seer. Crawl hole, high speed uh, winds here. Yes, Seer could come into play but it's really a word they made up last year when we got into a situation that they couldn't explain why we we're taking such a hard hit without any solar winds so we'll see what happens but this is the strangest solar weather or space weather let's go with that that i have ever seen and they're turning off all of my ways to get to the back end in other words, to see what's happening behind Earth. God bless you and yours, folks. Could be another day of hell. Uh, I'm having a hard time with all of my equipment, and I think it's probably worse than they're even letting us know. Please share, subscribe, and always remember, anything's possible in Bizarro World.